All right, uh, good day. This is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. It is September the 27th. It is Thursday. Um, it's 2012. We're coming up on an election November the 6th, um, and uh, it's a big year. Right now, Congress has a 10% approval rating. Will the Congress reflect that um, this November? And, uh, and uh, that's what we'll see. Um, we're interviewing people to let the electric know that there are alternatives that you don't have to vote for Republican or Democrat um, and keep things going the way they are. Um, there is another option. Um, and uh, we're interviewing Joe Bollum. It's um, for district number three. And, uh, and um, also here uh, for the state of Kansas, he's running against Kevin Yoder, who is the incumbent Republican. It looks like he only has one competitor. There's not a, even a Democrat in this race. So um, this is very opportunistic. Right now, Congress has historical low approval ratings, and um, he only has one competitor. Uh, you know, this could possibly happen. Uh, Kevin Yoder um, won the vote. I see here he did vote affirmative for the um, National Defense Authorization Act, which included those two provisions that can lock up uh, United States citizens and hold them indefinitely without any charge or um, basically just kind of snatch and grabs um, lawlessness. Um, anarchy, might makes right, just, uh, you know, being a number and, and not having um, the security of your constitutional rights anymore. And um, so that's what he voted for. Um, and, and so if you want more of that, go ahead and just keep the cycle going. If you want someone different who's going to vote differently on issues of our foundation, who's going to take their oath to the Constitution seriously to uphold it instead of destroy it um then you know there are other alternatives you need to know about and um so joel good day to you if um you, uh, welcome sir and if you could please tell us about district number three in kansas and also about yourself and what got you motivated to run this year sir <coughs> yes uh thomas uh <coughs> thank you very much i uh, appreciate your your call and your interest in what we're doing here uh, especially as we are coming to the uh, home stretch uh, of this campaign, and I, I believe we we are moving forward and uh, uh, sharing the the important issues, the critical issues affecting the lives of hardworking Kansas and all Americans. Uh, as you said, you know, there is options, and there are options uh, open to uh, citizens and open to voters here in the 3rd District. Uh, uh, this November, uh, the people of Kansas and America have a real and viable option in candidates. I am uh, a candidate running against Kevin Yoder. Uh, I stand for core values, uh, liberty, uh, responsibility, individual rights, and more than anything, you ask what's, uh, what motivated me to run for Congress, uh, and that is patriotism, uh, and I define that as, as it has been defined as love and devotion for America. You know, in uh, 2008, we had a bailout for uh, bankers and foreign investors. And that was a big, big concern for the majority of, of Americans, considering that the economy was in trouble. What can we do and what motivates us, lovers of liberty like you, and people that are concerned about the way things are going and the, the way things are, have been uh, running in, in Washington? We have certainly a, a great concern for uh, those who are ignoring uh, the individual rights of the American people and also 
you know, the concern for life and liberty. We need a government <laughs> that works for the people, not a government that is working for Wall Street. Yeah, the Wall, for I mean, Wall Street, the yeah. private um, prison complex, the military industrial complex, Halliburton, you, you know, oil companies, and, uh, and, and, and and lots of other special interests, um, big banks, and, and, and those are the main ones, I guess, and, and, the, and the media also. Um, I mean, that's that's who is in charge right now. Um, it, it, big pharmaceutical companies, big insurance companies. Um, it's not the medium and small size businesses. It's it's the people who can get the lobbyists who use the bailout money. Um, you know, you know the bailout money to you, you know buy. They probably you know what they use that bailout money for to to. to buy even more Congress people so they would get even a bigger bailout. I mean, that's the kind of corrupt system people want to live in, that kind of um, sewage, uh, then, uh, you know, that's what we got. Um, you know, just stay home, don't vote, and, um, you, you know, protest that way. Or um, you can uh, vote, and, um, and, and, and there's uh, someone who's not a Republican or Democrat. When you're looking at that ballot, circling it in, or however you do it on the computer screen, just, uh, you know, try something a little bit different uh, this year. Uh, right. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, uh, you know, one of uh, the big concerns uh, and now, you know, is, is uh, the economy. You know, we have a, a $16.4 trillion dollars in debt. We are not running a country uh, responsibly, fiscally responsible. Yeah, we're not in debt because like we had to get something that was really worth it. We're in debt because these other people are stealing our credit cards and they're charging it up and we're doing nothing about it because we think like, you know, somehow they're you know, I don't know, superhumans or something? I mean, I don't know why we give them yeah. the credibility that they have, but that's what's going on. I mean, we're being um, uh, scammed. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, our values, you know, freedom, you know, because as a libertarian, I'm going to stand for freedom. And freedom means that we are going to be able to uh, have those opportunities to to make it in 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 our democracy in in our country well it's definitely and not going to be with tyranny i can say that i mean it's de the, <laughs> we're not definitely not going to make it by having a tyrannical government uh uh certainly and let me let me say that uh what's what's happening uh in our congress um politicians in washington are selling and transacting and exchanging for money and power and prestige and they want to get reelected so uh, uh, they are not working for the people that are working for lobbyists corporate lo lobbyists they want to make sure that they will stay there for the next generation of Americans but let me tell you the next generation of American is going to be much weaker and poorer than the previous generation and that means tyranny well, yeah, then if, there's, if there's a revolving door in different administrations that, uh, you know, repress competition for their competitors and force their competitors to, 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 to pay their income where they don't earn their money, um, they just get it through bailouts and uh, corporate welfare, then yes, I mean, I would have to agree. I mean, it's going to be more, it's, uh, that's not going to lead to good um, uh, scenarios. That's going to lead to, you know, that is a form of tyranny. I mean, we already have tyranny right now, and it's just going to get worse. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's going to, you know, we want to prevent, it's going to create the conditions that brought up Nazi Germany and Hitler. I mean, the, the economy crashed. People were desperate. Um, they lost everything, and um, and they were angry at uh, y y you know people, and and so they um, slowly over ten years uh, they um, you know came into power and 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 became uh, it was just death and destruction and torture. Uh, I was out there campaigning uh, last week, uh, and uh, one of uh, you know the uh, residents, constituents, so these in the, uh, here in the third district said, "Why is America uh, making China 
bigger and stronger. Uh, and certainly I had uh, an answer uh, regarding the trade deficit that we have uh, with China in the in over uh, around two two hundred and ninety billion dollars. Well, we're just, uh, it's because we're a sleeping giant. We need to wake up. Yeah. We need to bring those the industrial capacity, return those jobs back to the American people. We need to make products here in order to be able to have jobs. We are not going to be able to uh, return return. You know, to, to the industrial capabilities that we had if our jobs have been uh, sent overseas. Uh, well, it's not going to be, I mean, it's, we're definitely not going to get anywhere by electing Republicans and Democrats. I mean, we're not going to get anywhere by continuing the same policies that have led to this situation that we're in, the state of the union that we live in. I mean, that's definitely not going to happen. Um, uh, it, it's insane to think so after, I mean, over the last 30 years or so, I mean, somewhere in the 70s, I mean, just the standard of living has been going downhill. Um, on the charts, it is going downhill. Our cost of living is going up, and our expenses um, are, I mean, our, and our income uh, ability is going down um, in a lot of ways, and, and our debt is also going up. And, um, and our freedoms are also going down. And, um, I mean, these are all just facts, and, and they keep going. And um, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, that is, uh, uh, that's uh, Thomas, that's back to the, you know, to the economy and, and what's happening in Washington with our uh, representatives. You know, the people of Kansas and America had enough of politics, as usual, which means... You know, these promises that are made to the American people, people, you know, that we are going to have a promise for a, a change for a smaller and fiscally responsible government, and that comes from the Republican side. But instead, the American people have been burdened by bigger government and more debt. I believe, and uh, I, one of my issues is term limits. And I make that specifically, you know, I'm pushing that and working with the people that want, you know, a new, fresh look at how we can have a fiscally responsible government for the people. That is. Well, and let's that is term limits with this election. I mean, that's how we get accountability. Let's have term limits. Let's limit the terms of these Republicans and Democrats. I mean, let's have their approval rating reflect the, them in office. Um, let's yeah, well, realize that in, we're uh, in charge, in, and, and they're the servants. They're the servants. Um, they're, they're going to serve publicly, hopefully honorably. But, um, you, you We know. cannot continue uh, to leave... Uh, to let the people down. Uh, and certainly the approval ratings is, is one uh, way of measuring how our Congress is doing. Uh, you know, back in, you know, it, it, it ru it's running about, uh, you know, the, the approval rating is about 10, like you said. Even back, you know, in uh, 2009, it hit rock bottom at 9%. You know, Hugo Chavez and Fidel Castro uh, are going to be more popular <laughs> than our uh, Congress, um, uh, especially those who are not uh, listening to the, vo to the voice of the people. You know, the people want government for the people, not gov government for... Uh, big special interest and and also for 
Yeah, that's why we've been having investors. I mean, that's why we've had the Tea Party. That's why we had Occupy Wall Street. That's why Ross Perot almost won in 1992. That's why half the people don't even vote. That's why most people are um, identify themselves as independents. I mean, we're sick of them. We the, the Bush and the Republicans had a full house. They had a full house. They had a full Senate. They had an executive. They could do whatever they wanted, and, 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 and people were repulsed by them. And then the Democrats had a full House. Obama had a full Congress. He had a you know, House and Senate. And, and, and they did Obamacare. And, and then they did the bailouts. They did the Patriot Act. They do everything that people don't want. And they promise um, everything they promise they don't deliver on. And, um, and then they just pull people along and keep them in a circle, like just chasing their tails. Um, they had, do have a 10% approval rating, so it's not like people are putting up with this. Let's see if it really goes into fruition uh, this November 6th. As many independents and third-party people as, as we can propel across the... Um, uh, you, you know, the, into the end zone and, um, and throw these people out like the barrels of tea on the Boston Harbor, you know, occupy the yeah. house. Yeah. Um, and so what about, you know, are we, do you consider America more of an empire or a republic? Uh, I want to, to work for the people and for the republic, uh, not for an empire. However, you know, things are, are much different than our forefathers and founding fathers, you know, um, uh, had, you know, pledged their fortune and their sacred honor. And that we need, you know, to be able to to just uh, uh, push these issues, like energy independence, for instance. That's one of my issues. And I will, uh, I am concerned about the price of gas. <laughs> and I am concerned about our security, you know, our national security, because our en energy dependence is jeopardizing our national security. And why is that? Uh, you know, we are, in 2011, our government spent uh, roughly 330 30 billion in foreign oil. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. And that's not yeah, even Yeah, and that is, we uh, you know, 60, 69 percent of the oil we use is imported. You know, that's the reason uh, we are in, in those uh, places and even yeah, if we, they didn't have any oil, do you think honestly that we would even be there or, or during the last like you know twenty years? You know. Um, so, uh, you know, the, this uh, this issue it, it, it's important and is critical, uh, and the people are wanting change in this in this area. You know, of of uh, our industry and our our economy. It, to increase our nation's oil production is a solution, and I would I indicate uh, in my issue, you know, what we can do to improve uh, in that. Uh, and what that about legislation? Fracking. Oh. I mean, do you think? Um, well, what's your views on fracking? I guess that's the first thing that I thought of. <laughs> uh, can you elaborate on that? Well, I mean, some, you know, I well, I guess some states are trying to prohibit it, and um, and then it's where they drill down, and then you know, kind of, um, I guess, kind of frack and explode like um, yeah. some different tunnels underneath to to let loose the natural gas, and then some uh -huh. people say that explosions, y y you know, um, create uh, fissures um, underground, and that they go into like you know the. Um, the springs and stuff like that. Now, right, uh, certainly, uh, you know, the environment, uh, you know, I am uh, certainly, you know, we are, uh, we should be good stewards, you know, but at the same time, you know, in terms of what is needed, we are not going to shut down all our industry and all our factories because, you know, send them to, to China. I think we have already laws in the books, you know, that are sound laws in regard regarding the environment and uh, to uh, restrict 
and also you know, people's restricting property our rights. national oil production is putting us at risk. Well, yeah, no, the weak prey could could do in a lot of places, but some of these places, you know, it might affect other people's properties as well. Um, so it has. Yeah, to that, that. that's that's uh, we can uh, can look at that, you know, in the, as a you know a separate uh, separately, yeah. you know, uh, as well, we do. You think states go should be from able state to state? Yeah. Do you think states? Yeah. So they yeah. would have the right to. That's what I, that. I would say. Review. You know what's going on. What's happening on the ground. And actually, be uh, be able to to resolve that issue and still move forward with uh, with what we need. Uh, importing 69 percent, 60 69 percent of our oil, it's it's not uh, it's putting us at risk uh, right now. You know, with the gas going up, up, and the other issue is, uh, for instance. Uh, you know, the uh, Strait of Hormuz. Every time, you know, that something is going on there, our gas prices are going up. So this passage for petroleum exporting nations in the Persian Gulf, you know, is causing oil prices to rise. Yeah, I mean, United maybe States. we could just, through the free market, buy oil and, and, and allow some more drilling um, in, in agreed upon places and... and, and I mean, maybe the free market might even encourage us to find new forms of energy, but it also could, um, I, I mean, I bet, you know, if we didn't go to war with Iraq um, and, um, uh, and are, you know, spending time and energies in, you know, Syria, Libya, lots of other places, Yemen, um, that, you know, we, they, they, they wouldn't be able to necessarily jack up the oil prices. They would still have to, we, it, the whole yeah. adventure would probably be cheaper in the long run <laughs> if we would have just bought the oil from them and, and then used competition as a tactic of keeping the prices down because they would still have to compete with Russia and Brazil and, and possibly even ourselves. Plus, we, I mean, if we want ethanol, like 10% of all our, I mean, our um, our uh, ethanol that's required in the gas tanks, um, which are hurting a lot of like like lawnmowers and stuff like that. But but it, it re our fuel requires 10% ethanol, and some of them are offering like up to 20%. And um, so as you know, newer cars might be able to handle that a little bit better. But um, so we we subsidize corn and and that raises the prices of corn which raises the prices of all our foods which contain corn products that have corn syrup and, and etc which is a huge amount of our yeah food. i am uh, aware of that we, i mean we could legalize industrial thankfully hemp. aware yeah well what about and i mean maybe if we had the right to grow industrial hemp and, and get ethanol from that and we wouldn't even need to subsidize it uh, i know there are there are there are options uh but Back to, you know, this, uh, you touch on the area of wars. You know, we was at war with, uh, with in Iraq. We, we were in Iraq uh, for eight years. And, you know, uh, I wanted our troops to, to come home. You know, I've been wanting and, and advocating for our troops to get the hell out of Iraq, out of Afghanistan. You know, we are spending about one trillion dollars a year to support the war, the war efforts. You know, as a father of a young soldier who uh, served in the front lines in Iraq, 2005, 2006, I know how it is, and you know how how you know a family, a parent feels you know, anxiously waiting for the, his loved one to return from the war. And uh, I, I oppose, you know, just sending our troops just and everywhere, we, even when we have not declared a war. Yeah, maybe they should have to go. Like, whoever votes for a war, they have to spend at least one year in it or something, maybe. Um, <laughs> and, uh, or yeah, maybe that's eight a, that's wars, a, like, like some and, of the and, uh, and the the numbers are are the the ones that really bring brings it down. You know, is this the Iraq uh, was a disastrous experience in, in my in my view uh, that caused four thousand four hundred and eighty four lives. 
uh, that's you know, a huge eight years amount. in hell, for what? <laughs> yeah. And we have that question to, to ask, and the people, you know, are asking and Saddam Hussein, our government to bring our troops home from Afghanistan. Yeah, and Saddam Hussein, even though he's a bad person and we're glad to see him go, he he, he actually was more against al-Qaeda than, than a lot of the people in the Middle East. So if anything, you know, he was more of a hedge strategically in some sense. Yeah, so. if we are going to go, let's, let's have, a, you know, a definite plan. Right. You know, I support our troops when they are, you know, uh, under orders, that's not, you know, any men and women in uniform serving their country, they are under orders. We have to supply for their needs. You know, Although I, I do get the job people. done and out of there. Yeah, the but if we don't have, yeah. we are staying there indefinitely. We got to get them out of there. They can call out orders, though, that are against the Constitution, so people that decide to do that should get a fair hearing on that if they do. And um, so that's great. I mean, that's a good reason to vote for you um, right there. And that's a huge financial reason. And more importantly, it's a huge um, just, uh, y you know, well-being type of um, issue and, and common sense. And I'm um, letting our military regroup, and it's just smart and... You, you, you know, it would, it would uh, have a lot of unintended good consequ consequences from, um, you know, not acting like an empire, but more like a republic. And uh, yes. Uh, so what? What? What about the issue of, um, like, let's just say, industrial hemp, um, the, the 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 kind that doesn't even get people, um, like, you know, a buzz. It's just an industrial plant. Do you think we should be able to grow that? Well, that is uh, certainly, you know, uh, an issue that we should, uh, you know, talk more about, you know, the general public. Uh, we do import you know. it. We can legally import it and use that imported hemp to make shirts. We can use it to make, but it can, we could use it instead if we could grow it. It doesn't have any drug effects whatsoever, but, you know, <laughs> they can make ethanol out of it. Um, it doesn't require as many fertilizers or pesticides, and, um, and it grows like really well it doesn't need as much water either and uh, it grows really quick um, yeah it's uh, uh it, you know, it's economically uh feasible you know and it will save and and it will um you know uh, uh, save the trees uh, too from yes forest. Uh, uh, the speak. objective is there uh we need to just i mean why uh, do we even have it illegal in the first place because yeah. marijuana is legal illegal because marijuana is the plant that actually gets people high hemp doesn't even do that. It doesn't have the amount of THC that, it, right. it, and it's more of an industrial uh, plant. And but it is illegal right now. Strange as it might <laughs> seem. Yeah, that's uh, that's the the issue right there. There is going to be uh, restrictions on on you know the the list of plants uh, that uh, that we have um, uh, or uh, the idea of importing. <laughs> uh, there is another issue that I I believe is 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 of great concern okay. to the american people and that's reduced taxes or we, the taxation is it has to has to be addressed you know lower taxes to create jobs job opportunities that is freedom you know i stand for freedom uh we cannot you know just stand by the sidelines uh like i said and um and not do anything. I am with those uh, lovers of liberty. Well, you know, do you support like a national? Expressing their concerns to to their, yeah, their you... uh, government, and here we are in this campaign, um, 2012, um, all geared up and and going. You know, I'm the probably the only one uh, candidate for Congress here that is actually uh, campaigning on the ground. You know, I have to do that because I don't have, you know, the monies, um, you know, on my treasury, you know, to buy expensive ads. Uh, I do it, you know, directly with the, with the public and any venue, any opportunity that I have, I'm out there speaking, you know, about this issue, lower the taxes to create job opportunities. That's what we need to do, a legislation that will protect, uh, uh, you know, uh, just let's, uh, 
you know, work uh, with a bill that will, you know, uh, protect the uh, workers' paycheck. Well, well should we um, get rid of the income tax and replace it with a sales tax, do you think? Would that uh, I, am, I am in favor of that. Uh, I'm actually supporting, you know, the sales tax, uh, the, uh, the fair tax. I, I think but it makes sense. Just as long as sense. it, just as long as it also gets rid of the income tax at the same time, you can't. You don't want to end up with both yeah. taxes. You know? Right, right. Uh, you know, this is this is not a. Um, uh, the proposal is not for uh, fixing. You know the the income tax uh, system. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of. Uh, conservatives uh, think that uh, you know the the tax system is broken. Uh, let me tell you what is broken: the backs of the American people, uh, you know, have yeah. been and you know are being broken by the heavy taxation because we are taxed at every you know. Uh, from every side. Oh, I imagine, like, I mean, you know, a sales tax is a lot more fair. I, I mean, everyone pays in. You don't have to worry about people not paying their taxes. Um, it's a lot easier on businesses. Well, uh, yes, a exactly. Lot, we, would have, we would have an immigration problem of businesses if we got rid of the, you know, income tax. Right, exactly. So I'm, uh, I'm support of uh, H.R. 25, uh, you know, to effectively reduce uh, taxes. Uh, and, and increase uh, government revenues. Uh, we have to have, you know, uh, revenues in order to support our government, but with the present tax system, you yeah, know, the, we, the it's fair oppressive. Tax, the you know? fair tax, you can keep the same revenues, um, you know, after a year than, than you would with the current system, plus it would have the benefit of just streamlining and making everything a lot easier, possibly, you know? Yeah, we want uh, hard-working Americans to keep more what they earn definitely I think even with uh you know what's going to happen with the biggest with, tax uh, is a bailout so i mean that those are the biggest taxes because yeah uh but uh on the other hand uh what are we doing you know to help this economy and especially the working poor you know over 200 and and, and 50, 000 kansas you know are on the bread line so what should uh, we need yeah, to do? Something. I mean, if you could, if you could just list a couple of your proposals, and then I'll just ask you some wrap up questions here. But I mean, what can we do for, you, you know? Um, and and you've, I think you've mentioned a lot of things already. I think you know, ending the the un, undeclared unconstitutional wars. I think um, someone who is not going to vote for these bailouts. Um, I mean, that those kind of things itself. Um, uh, will help and respect civil liberties. Someone just who's not going to be a Republican or a Democrat. I mean, again, you only have one opponent, Kevin Yoder. I mean, it's. I think just sending a message to Congress that, you know, we're not going to take it anymore. And um, and uh, right, so. We can, but but uh, what are some other issues besides the ones you've already pointed to? Well, I uh, you know support the veterans. As I said, you know, a uh, uh, hundred and sixty. Um, 105,000 veterans on the streets, and we have yeah, we uh, could fix 40 percent on employment yeah. veterans. Um, that, excuse me, uh, it could be less, uh, 25 percent uh, looking for work. Um, you know, that's that's a concern for for me. Services for for veterans. You know, to uh, to fulfill, you know, uh, the promises, uh, and especially they have served our country. They deserve, you know, the benefits, uh, and that is important. Uh, we, you know, uh, go back to to honor those who have Absolutely. served. Absolutely, there's yes. hundreds of thousands of our of veterans that we can make sure get the um, you, you know care that they need, um, and, and we should hold our obligations to do that completely. In fact, in some ways, we should try to exceed those expectations and try to give them some of the best care, um, some of the innovative, breaking, um, like news type of care. I, I mean, you, you know, we should expand um, all that and make sure that they're well taken care of, and um, and that's gonna, you know, that that's our 
contract with them, and, and that will affect not just them, but a lot of their families as well. So it will have that will have a big impact on our nation. Right. Uh, certainly, you know this. Uh, you know the economy. You know uh, recovery. How can we uh, go about? You know, uh, just uh, pushing for a plan that will actually recover America's job. You know, the government is is, is not the creator of jobs. You know, is is the private sector is is the free enterprise system that we have. You know, is the well, it the, works. The it, it works as long as there's no crony capitalism, where like there's revolving doors and agencies where they, you know, they write laws without congressional um, approval, like, um, and, and they're um, directly representing. Well, they're supposed to be representing us, but they represent um, corporations that they end up getting a job with later or or have worked for in the past. It's like a revolving door conflict of interests, and. Um, and just, it's, we don't have a level playing field. We're not all equal under the law. Yeah, that is a concern for us libertarians. You know, we got to stand for equality and justice. You know, that is a core value, you know, because not that we are spreading like you have heard on the news and from Washington, D.C., that we need to, to spread the wealth. Uh, I don't believe in, in, in that. I believe in equality rightfully. Uh, as, you know, the uh, founding fathers intended, even, you know, in all of these issues, especially when, you know, there is a, uh, interest, uh, a big interest in, uh, in making sure that someone is going to stay and continue to be uh, elected and re-elected to Congress. I am proposing, uh, you know, to, and I am pledging to vote for the term limits amendment. And that will, uh, you know, if if that is enacted, we will be winning uh, because liberty is under fire, my friend, and we have to call for support. Uh, there are people like you, you know, uh, interviewing candidates like me, and those who love this country and love. Yeah, liberty. people have a choice. Yeah. Like, I mean, right here, I mean, it's real simple. It's um, there's two people on the ballot: Joel Ballum or Kevin Yoder. And um, and honestly, I mean, it's it's it, 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 you, we know what direction the country is going to go by either of these two choices. I mean, one, I mean, it's going to be the same old um, uh, continuation of our violation of our rights, um, which, well, which does affect the economy. And the second is going to be an honest person who is credible and who is basically the be most qualified and best candidate to choose from. You might not agree on everything. You don't have to. I mean, but this is going to make the positive impact. This is um, there is someone who is in position that you can vote for, who is a better choice than what's there right now. And, I mean, I highly encourage people to uh, really consider that. Um, I mean, God, I mean, it's unacceptable, like, the condition, uh, the State of the Union that the Republicans and Democrats have been doing, and they don't want any competition. They hate competition, y y you know, um, and uh, they take it for granted. I bet, are, are you going to be in a debate soon, or um, have you been in any debate so far with Kevin? Uh, no, there has been no um, no invitation for a debate. Uh, I uh, certainly, um, you know, um, you would do I'm one. open yeah. for any possibilities, any any venue, any any place. You would do you know, as many debates as, as, as were necessary, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, the uh, this weekend we are going to be here in uh, in the old town of Overland Park, Kansas. Uh, there is the annual you know parade and and uh, fair going on uh, here, and uh, we're going to be talking to the people. It just right down, you know, my aisle. Um, here and um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I do appreciate, you know, this opportunity that you have given me to to speak to to the American public about the issues, about the concerns that we have, about the, those uh, pressing and critical issues like 
the, the price of gasoline, and I'm proposing an energy independence. And they can go to my website, uh, www.balamforcongress.com, uh, and they will have the whole scoop right there, what I'm working for, you know, what I'm proposing to do for the people, you know, in regard to the economy, in regard to re reduce the national debt, energy independence, we need energy independence now. You know, there is a, a, propo a proposing comprehensive, you know, energy. Uh, I think that's in the long run, but we need, uh, we desperately need to reduce the price of gasoline. Uh, we need to term, term limits to... Well, to gas and uh, gasoline and energy affects food prices yeah, because, I mean, the trucks exactly. that deliver the food, um, that transport it uh, directly, if, you, you know, those costs are all added on. And um, so, a lot of yeah. this, I mean, you know, the, the, the debts, I mean, think about the debt. We have a low interest rate. If the, the interest rate goes, like, just to 1% or 2%, I mean, that's going to, you, you know, absorb a lot more of our budgets. And all we're doing is adding more debt. So when that day comes, it's going to be even harder. Instead of reducing debt right now, while we do have a 0% interest rate, we're taking right. that as a as a sign to spend. What we should be taking it as is a time to, you know, pay it down. Um, and we're doing just the opposite. And, um, I mean, that's the numbers. I mean, this isn't just emotions, <laughs> even though this that directly affects it. But, I mean, those are real numbers. I mean, one way is... Is a life of debt, um, which 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 is basically just robbery, and 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 I mean the kind that we have, yeah, and, and the other exactly. is not. I mean, there's two directions I, I am we with, can go. With you, I am with you on that. Uh, Let's uh, go down Thomas. the path not traveled here in a long time, and uh, yes. you, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, uh, I'm excited. Uh, it's an honor, and uh, certainly with the uh, with the debt uh, crisis that we have, it's huge. Uh, it's going to take a, a lot of, of uh, a lot of effort. Well, the, and the on, most important thing of, is the Republicans. Yeah, the Republicans and Democrats aren't going to do anything about it. They're the ones who got us in it. Uh, uh, let me share this uh, quickly. You know, uh, uh, Andrew Jackson said, uh, and Andrew Jackson was our our seventh uh, U.S. president uh, here, um, and. Uh, he said that debt is the enemy of freedom. Uh, so what the people want is, is America to be free from debt. But to have an America that is debt-free, uh, we, we have to stand for freedom. Yeah, debt so is that's putting, what we have to do. Debt is putting okay. obligations onto our future who didn't sign on to it, who are suffering from the sins of their parents. I mean, so the debt is slavery. I mean, look at all these you know, people who have been in debtor's prison and stuff like that in the past. I mean, it really does equal that. It means like, you, you know, um, just um, uh, confiscation. I, I mean, that's that's what it ends up being, which is an opposite of freedom. And um, so uh, it, 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 it's, it's worse than neutral. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, some can argue to invest, but but we're, that's not what we're doing. And, um, and again, the Republicans and the Democrats, if they think they're the answers, they're the problem. So at giving a problem to a problem isn't going to help. I mean, they're the same people who thought, you know, bailing out and giving big bonuses to these executives on Wall Street that failed was a solution. And so it's no wonder why they think they're the solution. I'm surprised, like, they can even, you know, they have no shame. I mean, someone who's given us this kind of record that that could even go up and you know show their face on the ballots i mean it, did they th that just proves they have no shame and and they never will and um uh, so, uh, Joel, it's been a pleasure. Uh, w w uh, one thing we always ask people, one final question here, um, and, and, and by the way, everyone should r visit Balam for Congress, B-A-L-A-M-F-O-R, Congress, C-O-N-G-R-E-S-S dot com. And um, w w who's some of your favorite uh, people and why? Um, in regard to the our, our general... It could uh, be they history. could be living now. They could be living in the past. They could be someone you could imagine in the future. I mean, just whatever you can think of there. Well, certainly, um, I have been, um, you know, just uh, inspired by Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson, you know, uh, brought the 
the pay, paid up the national debt, brought it to zero, and what he had to do is to close uh, the, na the, the national, uh, the second uh, national bank of America in order to pay the debt. That's what we need to do. I'm inspired by uh, his, his work uh, as, a, as president uh, and also, um, uh, there is um, there are others uh, uh, that have inspired me uh, over over the years, and, and certainly this is a, pr a president um, uh, pre uh, president uh, Eisenhower. Eisenhower uh, was the uh, the supreme commander uh, during uh, World War II. Uh, and um, certainly when he came home, uh, he, uh, uh, you know, did not uh, and advise and, and uh, warn us of the military-industrial complex. You know, a five-star general, you know, opposing any uh, idea that we can, you know, build an empire and the military-industrial complex. Uh, that is is really uh, uh, an inspiration for me uh, to read their 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 works and and their history, especially here in Kansas, you know, from Abilene, Kansas, where he lived. He was born in Texas and lived uh, here in 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 Abilene. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, so those are the two that uh, right off, you know, I have uh, you know read and, and and follow and been inspired. Uh, by and uh, there are there are others uh, you know Ross Perot uh, it was uh, in a way you know I began to to be more into politics but uh, more currently and is uh, our uh, 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 Ron Paul you know I stand uh, with Ron Paul in one issue uh, uh, right off, uh, and that is uh, the Second Amendment. He has uh, spoke very uh, eloquently and, and clearly uh, in defense of the Constitution in regard to our rights, to uh, the rights of the American people to keep and bear arms. And that is an individual right. They have been chipping away and trying to take, you know, if if we lose on this amendment, we're done. Because we have to have, you know, uh, that uh, safeguard. Because if, if we go and, you know, not do, you know, not understand for those rights, uh, First Amendment and this particular Second Amendment right is Oh, yeah, we have to have the right to defend ourselves. I mean, absolutely. And um, it, it, it's, it's, it's written there not for hunting. It was written there against tyranny of the government. I mean, even during World War II, I think some Japanese generals said, y you know, we don't want to invade America because there's going to be, you know, someone with a rifle behind every bush or whatever. Yeah. And, and the same thing. I mean, if, if now, I mean, we don't and, ever want yeah. some kind of, you know, violent revolution. But you know what? It, it has happened before, and, um, and and we did win the war, and uh, and 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 that does make. I mean, just even the fact of having it. A lot of times, just having a gun means you're not going to have to use it because they know you have it. So, I mean, if if someone's just, uh, they deserve to have it. It, it is a it's, it's it's a right. I mean, if if um, so. Right. Uh, you know, I've been criticized, especially you know, as a chaplain. You know, uh, I am a chaplain for veterans. Uh, I am a non-paid chaplain, you know, uh, labor of love, uh, working for families, especially during the thick of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan where our so soldiers were coming, you know, wrapped in all glory. Well, it's a tool. I mean, it's a tool like anything else, and um, and like uh, your car could cause just as much damage. I mean, it's more powerful, and and it's, it's it weighs tons more. I mean, it, it it's a tool. It, it's the person behind using it. Um, it, it does decrease crime levels, um, and uh, and also. Um, 
I mean, think, you know, if, if people ever did have to have a revolution or whatever, I mean, I mean, the, the, look at Afghanistan, I, I mean, and we're much more armed than they are, so... I mean, it, it, it's it's but it's there as just um, because we have that right, and it also gives confidence because if people do have that right, um, and they know that uh, you, you know they're not going to mess with anyone, no one's going to mess with them. Um, it gives confidence to the whole idea of freedom that that when we do things voluntarily, it gives precedence to it. It's just like being in a relationship. If you forced someone to be in a relationship, then that's not true. Uh, that's not true. But if you, you know, if everything's voluntary, then that that means it really works. It's honest. I right. mean, you can have disagreements, you can debate it out, right. but that's true freedom. That's what um, people are born into, uh, natural rights that we recognize, not that we give out, but that we recognize of just being able to be a free thinker, being able to defend yourself, um, being able to, you know, defend yourself from tyranny and not being oppressed um, and, and basically not have your hands behind your back. Um, or, you know, and uh, I mean, perhaps if everyone got rid of guns, the government and everybody in the whole world, I mean, but that's not going to happen. But if, if that happened, then, then maybe there could be more of a debate. But still then, they could make good tools for certain things. I mean, it's it's a tool like there's lots of tools you can find in a shed or an industrial place that, that probably could do a lot more damage than some of these guns. I mean, it, it could actually be a tool as well. And uh you know, and and nowadays, I mean, there's so many more with our technology expanding. Who knows? Maybe guns won't be the protection thing of the future, just like swords no longer are. You know, we it could be lasers or something. So, um, so yeah, it, it's. I'm glad you you know summed it up with that. Um, and uh, well, thank thank you. I, I certainly will continue to to stand. You know, on this uh, in the, you know, in in the this uh, uh, issue, you know, to 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 make sure that, uh, you know, uh, laws uh, are not being I mean, honestly, uh, I feel safe as to to I, prohibit, you know, uh, in in uh, th this individual right, especially for uh, for law abiding citizens. Right, right. I mean, I feel yeah. honestly, I feel safer if I know all my neighbors has has guns. I, I do. I, I honestly, I feel safer. Now, I guess perhaps in some places I might not, but but where I, I there is you can feel safer knowing that because then then you know that you're less likely to be robbed. Um, you, you, you know, and um, and you know that you're in a country where everyone is, you know, or people that want to be armed are armed. And I feel less like there's a possibility there could be a tyranny that happens. I honestly feel safer, more secure, knowing that my fellow citizens. Um, uh, have the right to bear arms. It makes me feel better. And so uh, yeah, that's it. That yeah. If we are going to stand, uh, you know, for the Constitution, uh, we cannot leave that out. <laughs> I mean, what yeah. will stop that. like shootings is more yeah. education. It, what will stop shootings to to address that issue because it could be a serious issue is less bailouts, less crony capitalism, people being treated equally under the law. Like what Kennedy said, if if you disallow peaceful protests you make um, violent protests inevitable and um, whether it's just one person or, or groups of people I mean these people that act out and stuff you, you, you know it, was, it could be a psychological reason I'm not giving it any excuse but I think having a better society will in fact um, whether people like to hear it or not it, it would reduce the amount of those kind of situations and um, so uh, Joel I'll say goodbye to you right after the interview thank you so much for your time and campa campaigning going door to door ha go having that ground game like you're doing and um, I mean I think uh, you know here's a real chance to win so even if you're not in Kansas especially if you are um, you know imagine having one less Republican it's just like kind of like one less like ants that's climbing up here or one less parasite just one less less bad thing and one more good thing and, and get do as much of that as we can and maybe we can have you know uh, independents and third party candidates and double digits this year and, and, and really start to take our country back and uh, so um, and hold them accountable and uh, and, and, and keep and, and hold you accountable you know if we you know people give you two years as well so um, uh, and uh, well Joel thanks for your time again sir appreciate it yeah thank you